Okay, so I guess we'll start it off right now. It's 1235. So welcome everybody to our student panel. This is uh, put together by the Division of Science Student Council. Uh, for those of you who are new, the Division of Science Student Council is basically bringing together leaders from all the departments from the Division of Science to try to collaborate together to help the overall student experience here at City College. We have people from all different kinds of departments. Uh, we have also the, the advisors, which are Christine uh, Klesko, or Christine Savano is here, Captain Wood Silverman and myself, uh, and also NCHEM Stanley, but she is not here today. But if you know NCHEM, you can't miss her. Uh, so, um, but today we're talking about tips on how to get that opportunity. It's about how to uh, break in, get your foot in the door. You know, so many people have a hard time uh, getting that first step, you know, um, how to make it happen, you know, and, and a big part of going to college is networking, you know, and meeting people and find those opportunities, you know, because a lot of times opportunities don't come to you. You have to find those opportunities yourself. Uh, so we have a bunch of wonderful student panelists here who will talk to you about their experience uh, and share their stories. Um, all kinds of different majors and stuff, and you'll hear their perspectives because some of the approaches for a biology student might be different from a physics student, you know? Um, so we wanna explore all those kinds of resources and have an open discussion. And again, throughout this entire thing, you know, um, feel free to post in the chat if you have any questions. If you're not comfortable putting your camera on, of course, you don't have to. Just type in the chat, hey, I wanna ask this student in particular, what'd you do at this point? Or like, how, what's the website I can go to apply for that? You know, I want to, I want to read more about this. So feel free to put stuff in the chat and we'll try to address this as soon as possible. Um, if you'd like to be involved, feel free to email uh, Christine or myself. Um, we're definitely pretty active. Um, we have a Slack group to communicate if you want to get involved with that too. Um, so you can email Christine or myself, we'll get you involved. Uh, we put together events throughout on the campus um, start the semester. So please stay in touch if you're interested in participating or just being put on the email list, let us know. But I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of Science, Dean Susan Perkins, who's here to join us. So Dean Perkins, feel free to go oh, hello. Hi, everybody. Um, so glad everybody could join today. Uh, it's great to see the, the student council. Uh, I work very closely with them uh, across all kinds of things. They are my my most important group of advisors, I have to say. Um, our students here are, are really important uh, to us, of course. You are a lifeblood of science, and um, it's it's been a delight to work with our students uh, in research experiences, as well as in the classroom, and of course, through, through student council and other clubs um, that we have here. I don't want to take up too much time. I really uh, know that you're here to hear from the students and, and they're the ones with the most important information. I just I wanted to share, you know, if I think back to my undergrad days, which it just keeps getting further and further in the past, but I still remember it. Um, I did two different research experiences as an undergrad. I was a SUNY student up in Potsdam, New York, as far north as you can go before you trip into Canada. Um, and I always share this with students, and, and I, maybe I'm a bit of a broken record, but one of the most important things you can do, whether it's research or any other kind of, of leadership opportunity, you might be thinking about um, you know, running for office of a club or taking on a role as, as department leader in our student council. It's really, really important to understand that what you're getting is experience and understanding that it's helping you decide what you like and what you're good at, and maybe things you don't like, or maybe aren't your strengths. Um, and I think the best advice I could give to all of our students is to, you know, take each opportunity with with seriousness. You know, put yourself into it, but also know when to, you know, as they say, cut bait. You know, to say this isn't really working for me. For example, you know, you might volunteer to work in a research lab that is working with mice, right? And you realize, you know, I really don't like working with live mice. They bite um, or or whatnot. Or, you know, I, I think I like math and I like coding, but this particular project isn't quite what I'm interested in. You know, be respectful, be really honest, you know, with the people you're working with. Say, I really enjoy this opportunity. Um, it's not quite what I need. 
you know, be grateful and then, you know, move on and, and don't set yourself short uh, to get the other experiences you need. And I hope I hope I haven't conveyed a sense of, of being flitty about it. You know, like I said, I think it's important to to put to give everything a chance. But, you know, from my own time as an undergraduate, I really learned some things that I didn't like doing. And so it was very important for me to say, OK, that was good. I learned X, Y and Z from doing this. But now I want to move into something and that that has helped shape me uh, to get me where I wanted to be and do the kind of research that I really enjoy doing and, and feel fulfilled with. So with that, I'll, I'm going to turn it back over to the students. Um, as I said to the council members, I'm going to turn my camera off because it's my lunch hour. Um, so you don't need to see me eat, but I am here listening uh, for as long as I can. And I hope you have a great event, everybody. One more thing I want to say before I pass it over to Catherine real quick. Uh, one thing as a reminder, we have the October Research Opportunity Fair event, which is October 11th, happens to my birthday as well, uh, at 1230 on Zoom. Uh, so please keep in touch with us if you're interested in that. We will send email blasts to everybody on campus about the uh, event as a reminder. So please RSVP if you're interested. It's a great way for you to meet people in different organizations within CUNY and outside of CUNY as well to find out ways you can you know, build your resume. And also, I would like the student leaders to please give a reaction right now so we can identify the student leaders that are here as well, part of the council. So can the councils do a little thumbs up or a reaction right now? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm sorry, pass it on to Catherine. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason, and thank you, Dean Perkins. Um, as mentioned, my name is Catherine Glody Silverman. I'm the academic advisor for the Sustainability in the Urban Environment uh, Interdisciplinary Master of Science degree. We have a few students um, from that program with us today, Haley, who's on the council, and Dimitri, who will speak about his research experience. Um, and as Jason said, this is kind of our kickoff um, to think about research and other opportunities at City College. So you'll hear from students today about their experiences, what they learned, how they got their research or other opportunity experiences. And then on October 11th at 1230, we'll share uh, more broadly what some of those experiences and opportunities that you can apply for are. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to the students. I believe Dimitri will kick us off. And then um, we had a message in the chat for the order of introduction. So if you just wanna go ahead um, and pass it on to the next the next student. That would be great. Dimitri. Hi, everybody. How are you? I hope you can see my screen. Um, my name is Dimitri Travis Ambrose. Um, I am a, well, sorry, first of all, thank you for inviting me to be part of the panel. I appreciate that. And um, I'm honored to speak on behalf of, you know, myself and Noah. Um, so my name is Dimitri Travis Ambrose. I am a former NOAA EVP MSI graduate fellow. Um, I'm Haitian born American, Haitian born, Haitian American born here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, <clears throat> I went to school in SUNY Alfred State, uh, transferred to CUNY for City Tech, got my bachelor's degree in computer engineering technology, and then currently I'm pursuing my master's degree in sustainability and urban environment. Um, <clears throat> my research was mostly with NOAA. Um, that, well, that was my biggest opportunity, I should say rather. Um, where I looked, I had two projects that I was working on. The first one was called um, Silver Drop Monitoring, where we're gonna look at precipitation um, that falls throughout New York City to try to bolster the um, flood management warning systems in New York City. And then the second one was most recently over the summer, I was working with the National Weather Service and we, were, we wanted to look at trying to identify heat, uh, heat waves throughout New York City and how to better disseminate that type of uh, heat wave information to uh, citizens so that they have better understanding of the local conditions that happen during heat waves and what they can do to better themselves uh, during those times. Uh, my contact information here, uh, my LinkedIn account has uh, more details in regards to some of the projects and the researches, research that I've been a part of. Um, but other than that, feel free to you know ask any questions in that regard and I'll do my best to answer as best as I can. Um, from there, I'll pass it off to Sarah. Hi, um, I'm Sarah. I'm a biochemistry major at City College. Um, I, um, over the summer, I was a part of the research experience for undergrads. Um, 
for biochemistry, biophysics, and biodesign. Um, that is a program run through CUNY. So you can, if you're interested in that or you're in those fields of study, um, it's for undergrads only. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can find it on the CCNY website. Um, I did like a Google search and it was one of the top results that came up for research experiences for CCNY. Um, it also came with a $6,000 stipend. Um, my Metro card was also comped for the summer. Yeah, um, what Susan, what uh, Dean Perkins just put the link in the app in the chat. Um, and it was a really amazing experience. Um, I did neuroscience research at the ASRC. I worked with my um, PI was Susanna Mingott and she does research um, she does a lot of research for dop and dopamine. Um, she, a lot of the studies are with mice. I didn't work directly with the mice. Um, I did more of um, preparation for the brain, slicing the brains, preparing slides on the brains and doing imaging of the dopamine cells in the brains of the animals that we studied. Um, and right now I'm currently doing research um, with Professor Kevin Ryan. Um, he is a biochemistry instructor at CCNY. Um, and I got into that opportunity. Um, he was, I took his biochemistry class and I did really well in it. And I kind of kept in contact with him. Um, and he had um, a new project that he's working on that he wanted some undergrad students to help him with. So that's another good way of getting involved in research is just building good rapport with a professor that you're in class with and um, you know learning about what research they do and staying in contact with them um, so I will pass it on to to Joseph hello everyone uh, good afternoon my name is Joseph um, and I am an undergraduate uh, chemistry major here at the City College. Um, I've actually uh, got a reminder the other day that I've been uh, I've been studying chemistry for almost seven years now uh, since I was in the ninth grade. So uh, I've dedicated, I think, what I would consider my whole life to it because I feel like my life didn't really start until I took chemistry for the first time in the ninth grade. Um, as for research and things like that, I haven't had the opportunity to partake in any research here at CCNY yet but I am looking into doing things like that because chemistry is a highly research heavy field. Uh, I'm more, I feel like my expertise is again, more into the theoreticals and the, you know, the little, the little inf bits of information that people are like, who cares about that? Like I'm like the, the, the Quizlet or whatever it is, like the, the IQ person, not the IQ, what is it? The, like the, you know, like when you play games with your friends and you guys have like the, they ask you like the, the questions that you're supposed to know, like I'm one of those people. So uh, when it comes to chemistry, that's like my whole, my whole spiel is like the little bits of information. And more so, uh, I'd love to talk about the other opportunities that I've had here at CCNY. So one of the opportunities as mentioned by the people who have spoken before is the Division of Science Student Council. So I, uh, I'm a chemistry leader. Um, and I think the Department of Chemistry, I mean, the, the the Vision of Science Student Council is really, really amazing because it's opened up so many other opportunities for me. Like I've had so many different opportunities to like volunteer for all sorts of different things. Like I've volunteered for the division day that just passed. And I was also part of the student, the student orientation for everybody else. And I also volunteered for the welcome back day through the student life. And I've also had the opportunity to find other opportunities through like my email. Like I've, I've just recently got accepted for a mentorship program. Um, but yeah, that's about it on me. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Rifat. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Rifat. Uh, I'm a math and physics major. Um, actually after Dimitri uh, made that really nice presentation, I felt compelled uh, in the next five minutes to make a really quick presentation um, so I've had a few research experiences since high school, um, and uh, most of them are based in physics and math. Uh, and so I'm wrapping up my first year at CCNY uh, this December, and um, I've worked as an AI researcher. I've worked in exoplanet dynamics, uh, and uh, right now I'm working under Professor Gennady Yashevich. 
uh, to model heat diffusion using some uh, computational visualizations. Um, so yeah, uh, that's a little bit about me. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Veronica. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Veronica. I am a junior right now, and I'm majoring in applied math and computer science. So over the course of me being in college, I've been a TA, I've been a tutor. Over the summer, I worked at an internship um, for the Department of Energy, where I worked on uh, optimizing the code that they basically use to so basically the data, all the energy data in terms of industrial sectors all over the world, uh, they have this optimization code and I had to kind of optimize that. And I uh, also, and uh, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm also currently uh, the vice president of Association of Women in Math. And I, this is my second year as a, di a division, as math department leader for the division of science student council. And I'm excited to be here. So I'm gonna pass it to Joshua. Okay, sounds great. Thanks, Veronica. Um, nice intro. I'm Josh. I am uh, a post-baccalaureate student at City College in New York. I have spent a few years working as a paramedic in the emergency medical services field, a little different experience, and have a bachelor's in liberal arts from Tulane down in New Orleans, and have recently decided to pursue a career in medicine. I say recently, I guess I started in 2020, so it's been a couple of years now. Um, so my research experience is uh, somewhat limited to the like EMS specific stuff. So I don't really get involved in wet lab. I don't find it interesting. That's not really what I like to do, but I do still like research. I do some uh, clinical research with uh, one of the hospitals I work for, the Maimonides Emergency Medicine, uh, um, like residency team. Um, lets me kind of tag along some of their journal clubs and work on some like manuscripts they present and abstracts they present, which is mo mostly focused on like clinical applications. Like one example recently is like some using ketamine for analgesia as like a newer thing that we're doing clinically. So um, like presenting case reports on that. I also do some like qualitative research with a sociologist on how out of Queensboro, actually community college on how um, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected first responders from a mental health perspective. So um, I hope that I can offer kind of a different perspective of like what research can be. I think we have like a nice like spectrum here and I hope uh, we can get you guys excited about research and kind of inspire you to start moving. So um, I think we're going back to our moderator and getting ready to ask some questions. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you all for, for really great introductions. I'm excited to hear more. Um, we can probably keep this order as we're answering questions. And if at any point you feel a question doesn't apply to you or you wanna, we want, you want us to come back to you, just pass um, as we're going along. So our first question, um, oh, and before we get into that, I do just wanna mention in the chat, there was discussion of the Discord in the Division of Science. That is a super active chat area and a place where you can communicate with um, administrators and academic advisors, as well as other students. So I just wanna point out that that link to the Discord is in the chat. Um, so for our first question, we can go through each panelist. And if you wanna describe either more broadly or a very specific opportunity or research opportunity that you received, how did you get that particular opportunity? Did you email a person? Was it through a faculty member that um, you had in, in a class? Uh, did you receive it in a particular email from a listserv? How did you uh, come to find yourself in that position? Dimitri? Hi, so for me, my research opportunities kind of, I, I think it was weird, honestly. Um, so my first research opportunity came in from the National Science Foundation's Fund for Improving STEM Education for undergraduate students at City Tech. And that was more, that came in through like a, an email blast that I guess had gone out. And it was like, oh, we're looking for, you know, students that might have a background in computer science, in mathematics, in mechanical engineering. And I was like, huh. You know, maybe this is something I might be interested in because I do have a computer background, so might as well apply. So I applied and I ended up working on um, methane, not working on methane per se, but researching methane and how it comes from landfills and it's the, the health effects that it could potentially have on locals that live near landfills. Um, <clears throat> so that opportunity, that specific opportunity kind of, you know, came through the that 
internship with the National Science Foundation. My other research opportunities had come from really being tied to the National Science Foundation because as, as I was a student there, I ended up hearing more about the RU uh, program. I believe that was a research uh, experience for undergraduates. Um, I had a couple people that I was collaborating with that they were a part of that. And I had also heard from my administration at the time that there was a program called NOAA Sessert or NOAA Crest. And they had mentioned that there was a potential opportunity for students to um, either get a scholarship or get a stipend or become a fellow. And they would actually pay for you to go to school to some extent, or they would help contribute toward your tuition. Um, so that for me was you know, my initial contact uh, in terms of getting the opportunities to uh, expose myself to more research was the National Science Foundation, and then I hear about Noah Sessor, and then from Noah Sessor, just hearing more about the different opportunities and or um, work research that other students or other academic individuals were, were conducting. And I guess I'll pass it to, to Sarah to hear what she has to say, or they have to say, sorry. Thanks. Um... Yeah, I mean, for the for the um, Dimitri mentioned it before the REU B cubed um, program. I mean, I came across that just from like doing like a Google search, um, and there's like a lot of opportunities on the CCNY website. A lot of programs. I know the Mark program's another one, um, and then. As I mentioned before, my current research just kind of materialized from a relationship I have with a professor. Um, and like, don't be afraid to like email your professors. I mean, worst case scenario, they might just not even respond to you, but you never know, um, you know, what they're working on. If they need people, um, you can do an independent study or like an honors or be involved with honors research. Um, and I know through the MARC program, I'm not, I didn't, I wasn't in that program, but I worked with someone over the summer who was a part of it. And um, they give you a lot of amazing experiences. I know, I think they're going to LA this in November to present their research. Um, so that's another, another program to look into. Um, but yeah, I'll pass it on to Joseph. Thank you. Um, so again, I have not really had, uh, I haven't had the opportunity to do research here at CCNY, but I can, uh, I can say like, cause right now I'm looking into the research opportunities that are here. Uh, I need research for the master's program, which uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, CCNY has a lot of like programs besides just like, oh, you get your bachelor's in science or whatever. There's a lot of programs like afterwards that you guys can look into just like a little tidbit factor or whatever, but uh, they do have a chemistry uh, master's program that I'm looking into um, and I do need to have research for that program. So the first place that I've actually started to look is I've actually started to speak to some of the professors that I've had before because if you don't know, your professors have research labs. So yeah, so I've actually uh, spoken to my organic chemistry professor about doing research in his lab so that it can benefit me uh, going forward with the master's program because I need to have three semesters of research for the master's. Uh, not only that, but I've also spoken to my advisor for those of you who have been declared a major yet. Um, when you get your academic advisor, they most likely also have a lab. So my advisor, her name is Maria Tamargo, and she also has a lab and I've spoken to her about potentially working in her lab as well. And uh, another thing that I would like to say is that when you kind of look into these research opportunities, maybe one semester you want to do something in one lab and then the next semester you want to do something in a different lab. And I think that that's totally fine because my both of my like if I look at my professor from organic chemistry and I compare it to what my advisor is doing they're on completely different wavelengths but me personally I think that that's a good thing because I get more of a well-rounded a well-rounded experience <laughs> but yeah uh, I'll pass it on to Rafat now hi guys so um I guess my first research experience was uh really in high school um, so I went to Brooklyn Tech and I, there's a program there called the Western Research Program uh, that I was not admitted to, but I saw a lot of my friends doing uh, research on the side um, and they were doing it in physics, chemistry, biology, whatnot. Uh, and so I got kind of interested, but I never really had the time to do it until the pandemic came and I could turn off my camera and mic and pretend I was in class. Um, so 
uh, during the pandemic, I, um, I kind of uh, spammed a lot of uh, professors in CUNY, um, non-CUNY schools uh, to ask if they had any research positions during the summer or whatnot. Um, actually, I'm sharing my screen right now. If you guys look at this, you'll see how many, uh, how many spam emails I've sent uh, around that time. Uh, and so I wasn't getting any positive responses until there was this one professor, his name is Dr. Daniel Kabat. Um, he offered me uh, a position uh, to work under him to develop these computational visualizations of uh, special relativistic and electromagnetic phenomena. Um, so I worked under Dr. Kabat uh, for a few months. And so that was my really first uh, research experience. Um, and so that was the kind of catalyst that led me to other research experiences. Um, that's when I started loving like uh, research um, because research is really another word for creating new knowledge. Um, so after that, I, uh, at CCNY, when I first got accepted, I um, asked around if any labs had opportunities. Um, and Professor Carlos Morales' lab had an opening for an AI researcher. Uh, and Professor Morales, on the first day, he asked me, okay, we thought, so I heard you know a lot of programming, but do you know artificial intelligence? Uh, because that's what this position requires. And I said, uh, no, but I can learn it as fast as, uh, as you want me to. And so um, it's that kind of mindset you need for research, right? Uh, you're creating new things. And so you have to uh, learn and acquire new knowledge pretty fast. Uh, and so I got that opportunity. And afterwards, I, I got a few more opportunities uh, down the line. So uh, moral of the story, spam a lot of people, uh, email a lot of professors, ask around for labs. Um, and yeah, just uh, keep networking. Yeah. Wait, I'm gonna pass it on to Veronica, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so I also don't have too much experience in terms of research in CCNY. I kind of have more of a focus on industry. Like I wanna get into the industry after uh, college. So that's why I focus more on internships and jobs like that. And everything I've gotten so far in college has been through stuff I've seen in my email. Um, so, like different people, different divisions are always emailing with different opportunities. And, you know, I apply to basically as many as I can. Um, and, you know, I kind of put my eggs in every single basket and I, and I just see, you know, if you apply to a lot of things, I mean, you'll get into something. So, uh, so especially with my previous internship opportunity, um, it was actually exclusive to only certain schools. It was, um, for only minority serving institutions. So the pool of applicants was smaller because, you know, it's only from these schools and I wouldn't, and the DOE has many, many like different like programs um, that you could get into internships with, but this one specifically, I found out also through my email and I just applied and yeah, that's basically it. That's how I found mine. But I also have um, accounts on a lot of different, you, you know, job search websites. And I always like look at those, see what I can find, but essentially I, I just do the things I see in the emails. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Joshua. Thanks, Veronica. Um, I think the panel's made some really good points so far. I mean, check your emails, send lots of annoying emails, talk to professors that you know. I think there's a lot of really good points and a lot of good starting points. I think one thing I want to like really drive home that people, uh, it seems like everybody said so far is you will get rejected a lot when you ask the first time. That's totally normal. That's okay. And in fact, sending all these applications and emails will really prepare you for when you're trying to get a job when you leave college and <laughs> you have the exact same thing happen. Um, so, you know, in all seriousness, I think all of my research opportunities, which, you know, as a lot of people here, it's not like I have a vast research experience. It's not like I'm a, a PhD candidate or PhD, right? But the, the few opportunities that I've had have all came through connections that I had. So I think it comes down to like use people that you know, like obviously do the like, you know, big spray and try to hit whatever you can. 
But if you, you know, if you did really well, and let's say you're in the biology department and you did really well in uh, Professor Fruznia's biology 101 class, you know, you did really well, you have a really good relationship with your professor. That's one place you can start is you can say, hey, Professor Fruznia, I don't really like plants, to be honest with you, but um, do you know anybody in the biology department that's looking for an undergraduate? And then they can vouch for you. And that like connection and networking can be really important to finding that first thing. You know, I just as everyone else here definitely got rebuffed on a few of my initial attempts to get involved in research and that's okay uh, that's totally okay you're not gonna you know walk in and be you know first name author on the first paper that you're working with right like you you have to work for it i i will say you know as you know, you can kind of see from listening to different people on the panel, there's a lot of different kinds of opportunities of research. So I wouldn't stick yourself in something that you're not interested in. You know, uh, Rafath would probably never like what I do. And I guarantee you, I would never like what he does. And that's okay. Like find things that you're interested in and allow that to kind of drive you because, you know, th there's no reason to, you know, try to get into research just because it's a prestigious name. You know, if you're really not into biochemistry, don't join a lab that's focusing on like how chaperones do protein folding and how that affects it. Like that's not going to be really interesting to you. Like find something that, you know, gets you excited and try and try again. So um, uh, if we can give it back to Ms. Silverman. Thank you so much, Josh. And I feel like you just did my job for me because that was such a great wrap up of what everybody else had said. Um, some really great advice. Definitely, I'll just echo, you know, leveraging connections is definitely key. Um, and having a professor introduce you to somebody versus just emailing them out of the blue is going to more likely merit uh, a response. I will also just add, um, if you're reaching out to people you know, all over the place, people you don't necessarily know, a great way to establish a more immediate connection is if you look up something related to their research and see maybe they're going to be on a panel, maybe they're going to be presenting about their own work. If you can attend those things and then start your email with something like, hey, I saw you speak about these things and really enjoyed what you had to say about this. Um, you can also do that in reference to their own research. If you read a few of their journal articles, that can be a really helpful hook um, so that faculty members and people you're reaching out to know that you're actually really engaged with what they're doing and not just emailing a ton of people. Um, Dimitri, did you want to add something? Yeah, I did. Um, I wanted to add in, in, in the mindset of thinking about opportunities, um, <clears throat> sometimes you, you might not find that the opportunity you're specifically looking for is available. So you might have to be the one to create it for yourself. I have a colleague of mine that was a part of, that was also a part of the NOAA assessor. Um, and they were focusing on microplastics. Um, I believe it was specifically coming from like our clothing. Mm -hmm. There were um, the, I forget, the vinyl that comes off the print of our clothing. Yes, the microfiber. And how, yeah, and how it can get into the, the get into water, get into our food systems. And they had to basically create that opportunity for themselves by looking for individuals that might have connections to either fisheries department and looking at, um, you know, the waste management different departments so that they can create that opportunity for themselves. So that's just something that I also wanted to-, to, to Absolutely, to thank you so much. That's a great point. Um, and just to conclude, one other recommendation I have is if you are emailing people out of the blue and you don't hear back, if that's something you really, if that's an avenue you really want to explore, it's a person you really want to work with, sometimes it can be helpful to follow up with a LinkedIn note, sort of reminding them that you emailed. And then if that doesn't work and you still, you really want to talk to this person, try just giving them a call. Most uh, desk phone numbers are listed, particularly for CUNY faculty, and you can just leave them a voicemail reminding them that you, you did email and you really want to get to know them a little bit better. Um, but really great responses from all of you. Our next question, I'll hand it back to Dimitri, is um, how did you make the most of your experience? And this can be of research or for those of you who did an internship or worked elsewhere, how did you really get the most out of it? Awesome. So um, for me, my I think for me, I started thinking about what it is that I'd like to do when I get out of school or when I'm done with everything. And that's what kind of geared me toward making the best of all my opportunities because um, the opportunities that I've had thus far, they don't always exactly align with what it is that I'd like to do, but I try to find a way to, to see it in a light where it does add some benefit to 
that overall scheme. So like, let's say I wanted to build a business of sorts. I would want to take business classes along the lines, along the lines of taking those business classes. I would also want to take maybe, um, I might not like it, but I have to take communication courses where I can be able, where I learn how to speak, speak in a manner that allows my audience to understand what it is I'm talking about. So in that regard, for me at least, that's that's what I've been doing. Is I've been trying to see or see things that the opportunities that I have in a light where it still, it may not be exactly in a straight line, but it's still moving, I guess, forward in a sense toward whatever it is that you know my my goal is for myself. And um, I'll pass it to Sarah. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, most of these experiences, you know will be like a few months to like up to a year and it's not a lot of time. So you really do want to like take advantage, um, really get to know like your PI, the professor, your boss, or whoever you're working with. And honestly, like really get a, like form a really good relationship with them because chances are like they're the master in what they're studying and they've been um, working in the field for a really long time. Um, and you really don't know what they really know and, and, and everything that they've worked towards until you actually get to like sit down and talk to them and get to know them. So, um, you know, even if it's, you're working on something, you're realizing you're not really that interested in it, like building relationships is a really um, good way for you to like build more connections. They might know someone that might um, be working on something that actually um, is more suited to your interests. And they even might, be, from after building a good relationship with them, they might even want to hire you um, after you graduate. So, um, you know, don't take for granted these like situations you're into like build a really good relationship with someone. Um, and I'll pass it on to Joseph. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I actually really agree with what uh, everyone has said so far. Uh, I think especially like, what Sarah was saying about building relationships. I think building relationships is something that's really, really good to get the most out of whatever it is you're doing. Um, me personally, I don't really, I, I feel personally, I don't struggle a lot with like talking to people or like making friends or things like that. And I feel like it's because of this, like you don't have to be like a social butterfly or anything, but I feel like just having that connection, that one person in your job that has some bit of like power or whatever, or like you guys, and they know who you are, like, you know, out of all the names that they see, they know your name. I feel like that's important because that person can recommend you to different things or to push you farther. And another thing that I wanted to bring up is in any opportunity, I think making the most out of every situation, whether it's bad or good or whatever it is, is, is what makes you get the most out of that opportunity because you should view everything as something that's a learning moment for you. Like, you know, as I mentioned, I've been studying chemistry for seven years, but it's been a very long seven years and I've fallen down quite a few times and I've had to get myself back up because that's just how life is. But I've never took any of those moments and said, well, maybe I should just give up or maybe I should, you know, I keep, you keep pushing on and you grow from those moments and it makes you, uh, you know, it gives you more experience and it makes you a better candidate for more opportunities and things like that. Um, so I'll pass it on to Rifa. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with the second thing that Joseph was saying. Um, in research experiences, especially, it's very important that you get comfortable making mistakes, falling down, getting back up and learning from your mistakes. Um, when I was working as an AI researcher in Professor Morales' lab, that was the first time I was ever working in a lab. Um, and I was really nervous to make any mistakes, ask any questions. Um, but as I went on and on, I realized that, you know, that's the whole point of research. You're pushing the boundaries of, of our current state of knowledge, right? So you have to make mistakes. You have to ask questions. Um, so yeah, so it's important to get comfortable with that as, as Joseph was saying and leverage your personal connections. Um, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And also one more thing in research experiences, um, professors will usually lay out a kind of a plan for you. They'll say, okay, um, do step A, step B, step C, but don't be afraid to push back. So um, if, for example, they say, okay, can you make a computational visualization of this plot against that one? You should ask, okay, but why? Why can't we do this? Or uh, why can't we pursue this alternative approach? Um, because just because they have a lot of experience doesn't mean that 
you shouldn't ask those questions. You should push back. And um, because that's, that's what makes research valuable. It's a collaboration. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that was helpful. And uh, I'll pass it on to Ron. I definitely agree with what everyone has said so far. It is very important to have, make connections and also be open to making mistakes. Um, for for internship, actually my first internship, it was really funny because it was my first internship. All the jobs I've had before, you kind of go on, go to the job and you're already supposed to know how to do everything. Like, you, like you're just supposed to go like straight into it. But an internship is kind of a mix of working and learning. And I was not, I was so not used to like asking questions, making mistakes and just you know, the people I work for, they were super sweet about it. They were always saying it's a very steep learning curve. And I think that that goes for research as well, because I'm, I'm sure research is like really high level stuff and you might need some time to catch up. And they were always trusting, like ask questions, ask us questions. We're so, uh, we're open to it. So I'd say, again, ask questions, um, make sure the questions are kind of on a more, you know, advanced side, just so they could see that you, that you have been like, you know, learning and that you've been listening and that you're, and that you want to learn more based on what you already know. So yeah, so that's my advice. Um, Joshua? Yeah, I had the benefit of going last on the, oh, sorry ignore that um the benefit of going last on the panel is i get to ignore or get to echo a lot of good ideas so you guys have a lot of really good ideas i think that uh two things i really want to echo and highlight are one you know as people have said make a mistake like get out there get your feet wet like get to the you know get uncomfortable like it will be uncomfortable at first that's okay that's actually a really good thing for growth and you know kind of improving uh what you're doing additionally like going back to kind of what we said on the first uh the first question for the panel like this is your opportunity to make connections i would say to me the best way to make this work is to build a good relationship uh with your pi with other people you're researching with you know this is your opportunity to develop those relationships that will benefit you later on and so uh that kind of allows you to do research in the future or to you know potentially find that you know if you are really interested in biotechnology maybe you meet someone that you know has a connection for you oh hey maybe there's this internship at Pfizer I did last year this could be really good for you and it can become a really uh, good experience so that research isn't just answering the research question it's also promoting your career exposing you to new things allowing you to push your career both academically and maybe eventually financially in the right direction so I'll pass it back to Ms. Silverman Wonderful. Thank you so much, all. Um, definitely, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions, make mistakes. Um, as everyone's saying, uh, yeah, this is your this is your learning opportunity. And like Dean Perkins said earlier, this is also your opportunity to figure out what you do not want to do. Um, I know for myself, I went through an entire geography degree and loved certain elements of geography, but by my senior year realized I did not want to do GIS all the time. And so that required a pretty significant pivot, but that's okay. I didn't take a job I didn't want. I had learned that as an undergrad in a lab. Um, so next up our question, I'll send it back over to Dimitri. What obstacles did you face either in, you know, securing your opportunity or things that you faced while you were doing this research? Was there a learning curve? Did you make that mistake? And how did you overcome any of those obstacles? Thank you for that question. I would say for, for me that there, there were a couple obstacles. Um, first and foremost, the main obstacle I would say for me was more of a mental obstacle in that uh, I'm not sure if uh, a lot of students may have felt um, imposter syndrome, where it's, to my knowledge, it's the idea that, or the thought process that you don't necessarily belong where you currently are. And I would say for me, that came about being that, being an African-American male, well, really being a Caribbean American male and being that, you know, within my own family, I'm one of the few individuals that has gone on to get a bachelor's and then even start pursuing a master's degree. That was the, the first mental, you know, block that I had to kind of overcome and understand that it's okay that, you know, I'm charting, you know, waters that have yet to be charted. Um, there are individuals that 
have charted this path before. I just have to find a way to, you know, reach out to those individuals and see if they can help navigate said waters. And it's okay that that those people aren't my direct family. Like it's okay that it, you know, it might be a professor, that it might be, you know, a panelist from, uh, for me specifically, no assessor or something. Um, so that that was one of the first blocks that you know I kind of had to overcome, and that I'm still overcoming uh, even now. Um, uh, other than that, the other one was more of an academic learning curve, where I personally didn't have a background in Python, and a lot of the work that I've currently been doing has been Python based. So that was an initial block in that I had to kind of put myself through a boot camp to understand the basics of uh, utilizing Python. Don't get me wrong, I have I had a, a, a background using other types of computer languages, just not specifically Python. But from what I've come to learn, once you learn one programming language, you mostly know them all. It's just learning the, the syntax, the, the, the punctuation, the grammar, or so to speak, of the new language. But um, yeah, so other than that, challenges. No, I think those were like those were like the, the most two like higher up there for me that I can think of like right now in terms of the challenges that I personally had to overcome. Um, I'll pass it to, to Sarah. Yeah, so a big challenge for me. I'm actually this. I'm working on my second bachelor's degree. Um, I originally got my first degree in 2013 and decided to do a career shift and try to go for medical school. So because I received financial aid before, um, I had capped my award amount. So I'm paying, you know, for my tuition, everything out of pocket. So a big thing for me is, and I'm sure there's other people probably in this position, um, is just managing, doing research and doing everything I need, in addition to like having to work full time and pay my bills and, and um, you know, just manage all the different things that I have going on in my life, I think has been like the biggest challenge for me. Um, and I'll pass that on to Joseph. Thank you. Um, so one of the biggest struggles that I personally had, like going throughout my academic career and things like that, is, is more so, I, again, I feel like I had to learn it's okay, like as I mentioned, it's okay to be a human and to make mistakes. I feel like because, you know, in my family, I'm the first to graduate high school, to go to college, to do all those things. And so I'm kind of on a pedestal in front of my whole family and, and in front of everybody that I know. And I have a certain standard. So, you know, when I make a mistake and I kind of slip, it's kind of scary because it's like, well, what will my grandma think? And what will my mom and my dad think? And things like that. And it really, it, it pushes a, a, a strain on, on my, it pushed a strain on my mentality for a, a little while. Cause it's like, I don't want to fall and I don't want to, you know, have to pick myself up in front of everybody and they're all watching me type thing. Uh, so I think that that was one of the biggest strains that I had to go through because I, I felt like I had to know everything. And if I didn't know everything, then I was in my mind, I felt like I wasn't good enough, even though nobody ever told me that. It was just something that I, that I guess, uh, like a, up like a thing in my brain that I had like created for myself and I had to push past that and like as uh Dimitri had mentioned imposter syndrome like there's so many times like I'm I, if anybody has ever seen me walk into any office at CCNY I kind of stand at the door and I wait and I stand there and I'm like oh my god I don't belong here like I'm I I don't go in unless I'm welcomed in uh, like even like I think like the other like when Christine took me to the biology office the first time she had to tell me to come inside the first because I'm like scared of things like that I don't know but I feel like just like you know pushing past yourself and letting you know that it's okay you know to be a human being and to uh, you know to be yourself and to have make mistakes and things like that I think that you know I think that that's fine and that was my biggest struggle I'll pass it over to Rifaf now yeah, that's that's totally on point. Um, getting over that mental struggle that it's okay to fail so uh, was a big one for me. And also what Dimitri was saying, uh, learning a new language. So first of all, language-wise, um, when when I worked in Professor Morales' lab, everyone was throwing around words like NMR, uh, ODMR. Like, what are these words? I don't understand. Um, we're speaking, we're all speaking English, but there's a different language being spoken here, and that's the language of condensed matter physics. 
Um, and I had no idea what was going on because I didn't even take quantum physics uh, at that time. So I was like so lost uh, for some time, but after a few months, it gets better, right? And then you start learning to have fun once you're comfortable with the terminology. Um, same thing happened with my exoplanet dynamics research. Um, first few months, I was like, uh, what is a nitrogen hydrate? Why do we even need to care about these crystal molecules? And then after some time, uh, after I got used to the terminology, I started to have fun, which is the whole point of research. Have fun, invent new things, create new ideas. And what Joseph was talking about, um, it's okay to fail. I think that's also very important. Um, often your advisors will ask you questions on the spot, like um, what are the what was the temperature at which this research study was conducted at? What was the, what was the procedure, what not? Um, or they'll ask you to explain or clarify an, an idea. Um, and when that happened, the, the first few times I was very like nervous, you know, if I trip up, they're gonna think I'm stupid or, you know, something like that. Um, and so I was so nervous, I was like, I was like a, a ball of sweat practically. Um, but, but after some time, you kind of take it as a challenge. You take it as a game. Um, and the mentorship becomes a collaboration uh, between you and your advisor. Uh, and so that's really what I've learned to approach research as, um, as something that's fun, something that's a collaboration, uh, almost like a game, and you're inventing new, uh, new ideas. So with that said, I'll pass it on to Ron. So I'm actually really glad that Python and coding were mentioned. Um, so for my for my internship, they were the people I was working with. They were all mainly math people, and so they brought me on, and they were like, "Okay, so you're math and computer science. So you know more about computer science. So you know you know how to fix all these things." And it was basically this like Python code of like thirty thousand lines, and I. I was so lost. I, I was like, I'm supposed to know this. I'm, I'm I just started CS when I took this internship. I knew how to code in Python, how I learned Python. I, one, day, one day I had some free time and I just learned all the syntax because I already knew um, Java and R, which are other coding languages. So as Dimitri said, once you learn one language, other languages are easier, but still, I. Only I, my Python knowledge was limited. So I had, so there were like so many variables and I was just, I didn't know what to do. So I would basically had like another like tab open at all times and everything I was doing, I was searching up any possible function. I was going through every folder, a folder for um, pandas because pandas is the uh, full, uh, thing we use most of the time. And I just, like I basically researched everything and spent half the time looking stuff up. And yeah, and because I didn't know everything, I like a drop of a hat. Like I, I also started to feel like, why, why was I hired? Why am I here? Why, like, how did, how did we get here? And eventually I realized that, um, you know, I, I am just an intern and they knew what they were getting into. Cause I was, I was pretty honest with my abilities and I, I'm, you know, I'm researching stuff, you know, I'm trying to understand it. And I was understanding it, you know, I was learning, I learned a lot and they saw that and they saw the effort I was putting in and they really, and they appreciated it, they liked it. Also, one more thing, though in the work environment, you gotta like talk a certain way. It's like, you're, you're working with older people and you, you know, there's a different level of respect because my whole life I've been mostly working with people you know, my age, I know how to talk to people my age, but like in a professional work environment, like the kind of small talk you, you need to like interact with everyone. That was difficult for me. I had to kind of listen in for a while, see, uh, see how they talk to each other and, you know, try to simulate that. But yeah, um, after a while, I like learn, learn, you know, you know, how, how they talk basically. And yeah. Um, so Joshua. Yeah, um, I can talk a little bit. I don't know if we're, uh, if we want to address the question, um, but Catherine, I need to say we're running pretty low on time or if you want me to talk a little bit. Um, sure, go ahead. 
Okay. Um, so I had a pretty similar obstacle when this question came to mind. I had a pretty similar obstacle to what Sarah said. Um, you know, I work 40, 60 hours a week and I'm in part time school and like fitting in research with like a dog and a girlfriend. Like it's like hard to do all this stuff. So um, to me, uh, that was the biggest thing. And it was the biggest thing was just coming back to school was like, you know, color coded calendar, sticking to like, you know, putting your putting yourself first, like having your priorities very straight um, and knowing what you're willing to give. Like don't bend over backwards for this research, just like you shouldn't do it for your job, just like you shouldn't do it, you know, make sure you prioritize yourself and your health. And uh, to me, that time management was really important. So initially when I started with the research opportunities, I was like, oh, lit review, let me like look through all this stuff. And I started spending too much time. And I was like, okay, I'm taking classes. I'm doing MCAT prep. I'm doing X, Y, and Z. Like I need to establish my priorities very clearly. And that actually allowed me, I think, to do more research because I wasn't burning myself out by overburdening myself initially. So that that's my kind of obstacle. Awesome. Thank you so much. Really wonderful insights here about, you know, juggling everything, addressing burnout and addressing imposter syndrome. Um, all very important things. We are out of time, um, but I just want, I put in the chat, does anybody have a concluding question or um, does anyone on the panel, any of our panelists, thank you so much for all of this insight. I think this will be really helpful and it will have a home um, online. As of later today, you can search on the CCNY Sustainability YouTube page and you'll be able to find this video. Um, so feel free to share because this has been really fantastic, really fantastic insights. Um, but do, do any panelists have any concluding thoughts, anything you want to leave with? Um, I do. Um, there, I'm not sure if everyone else has been exposed to this or not, but there is a certification program that's uh, offered by site or city, C-I-T-I. They have a, I will share my screen as quickly as I can here. That's not what I needed. I don't, here it is. They have a certification program that I personally have a certification with where they go through and they teach um, the basics of what responsible uh, conduct for research is and what that looks like, whether that be getting a mentor or um, making sure that you're not stealing and or copying data from other resources and claiming it as your own. Um, so this is, I believe CUNY does offer something along this lines as well. Um, this one, I believe, uh, it, I think it is a paid certification that you have to pay for. Uh, I'm not sure whether there's a program throughout CUNY that offers um, a way for that payment, but that's definitely something to look into as well, um, especially those who are looking to look for research opportunities, having this certification already had done, you know, would potentially make you look more favorable than somebody who doesn't have the certification. Um, and that was about it. Thank you so much, Dimitri. Anybody else concluding thoughts? Christine? Hi, I'll share one thought that I, I tell all the people I work with and I, I tell myself even sometimes as a reminder and I, I tell my children and I tell everybody is to just try for the opportunities that are there. Oftentimes I see people and I was myself also growing up and life experiences where I wouldn't apply and I wouldn't try for different opportunities and I stopped myself when really, if I would have applied, I might have landed the position. And, and I've seen many students along their journeys where they get encouraged by people, mentors, myself, peers, and they're like, just go for it, just try. And then they get the position. And they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I got it, right? So we're often our own worst critic. We also you know, have uh, different things we all have to work through, but just try and apply. Put yourselves out there in the safe ways that you can. And, and you'll be maybe even surprise yourself, but probably not us because we know what you're capable of, uh, but go and apply and try and put yourselves out there and you'll wind up with getting more opportunities than what you can imagine, I think. Thank you. Awesome, great point, Christine. Any other panelists have one final thought before we conclude? Um, I was going to say that for, I don't know who's, you know, I don't know specifically uh, where everybody who's in here is standing, but I wanted to say like, if anybody is like a freshman or, or even like you're a sophomore, or you're a junior, I think it's okay for you to have a rough start in school and things like that. And you feel, you know, when you get those emails in your city mail and you're like, well, I don't even qualify for that, but I really want to do it. Or, you know, I'm, I can't do it. I, I want to say that it's okay to be, you know, to have like a rough start and to mess up in the beginning. And it's never too late for you to turn things around as people would say, or to, you know, to get 
better. I don't think it's really a better a better way to phrase it in my mind at this point. But I think it is really uh, important to just never give up and to really put yourself out there. Like Christine mentioned, even if you think you won't get that thing, like I applied for the student council and I didn't think I was going to get it. I just kind of applied for it because I was just like, OK, this sounds really, really cool. And I ended up getting in and I got an email. and I was so happy about it. So you really never know what will happen unless you really put yourself out there and try. Don't be afraid to to talk to people or to reach out or to apply for these different things. Because again, you don't know the outcome. There may be a probability that you have like 99.999% of not getting it, but that 0.00001% that you get it is still there. And that could be the winning factor for you. So really just don't give up and try for everything. Awesome, thank you so much, Joseph. Well, we are quite a bit over time, so I think we'll conclude here. Um, but like I said, we have our October 11th um, event where we can share additional information. Um, and thank you so much again to our panelists for really wonderful insight and sharing your experiences in a very candid manner. I know that's gonna help a lot of students um, who are considering research or other opportunities for the first time. I do see Dimitri's hand raised. Yes. Dimitri? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I just had some final um, opportunities that I just wanted to just mention. Sure. Um, they are from Noah uh, Noah Sesser. Um, that's the the Center for Environmental Science uh, for Earth System Science. Sorry, and Remote Sensing Technology. They have programs that start from Summer Bridge, which is the high school. Not not high school. That's hires. They have hires, which is a high school um, program that offers research opportunities for high school students. Then they have the summer bridge program, which is pretty much open to um, graduate and undergraduate students. And then they also have a a, a NERTO, which is open to graduate students. Um, so they offer you know various degrees. They take in students from various degrees and give them opportunities to work throughout the NOAA consortium. There's a STEM Hive, which uh, an associate of mine is the CEO of. Um, this is her, Carolina Perez. Uh, she, they have a mission to try to uh, expose more students and uh, to, to STEM education. Um, STEM Hive. <laughs> awesome, glad to know there's somebody here from there. RF CUNY, uh, I believe they fund a lot of the research I'm not sure if they have opportunities or not, but I think that they might have some opportunities for students to- Usually they don't. Usually the RF is what helps oh, okay. to deal with the faculty grants. So you would apply through through faculty. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, uh, are you, are you, CUNY, Crest, are you, I believe. So yeah, those were- It's a nice question, Dimitri, because you're reminding everybody about coming to the October 11th research opportunities event and i think maybe we're going to recruit dimitri to come to talk then as well yes <laughs> <laughs> um, yes and um, there was october 11th at 12 30 where there's going to be a slew of opportunities for you to learn about that you'd want to apply for so it's a nice a nice close dimitri as that reminder great yes and just to conclude there was a question in the chat about um if you don't have any experience how you can get some of these uh, research opportunities. So it really depends on the opportunity itself, how much uh, required experience there is, if any at all, but always check that. And my recommendation is even if it requires just a little bit of prior experience, if you're writing, for example, a cover letter and you say, you know, I, I'm a fast, I'm a quick learner, I'm ready to get fully embedded into this field. Um, a lot of times, even opportunities that say you should have a little bit of experience, they'll consider you even if you don't. Um, and with that, I think we'll conclude and, and yeah, head into our October 11th event. Thank you so much again to our panelists. Thank you, Christine, for organizing. And we look forward to seeing everyone in a month.